Hello guys and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to show you how to get a crushed flax or matte look in your photos. It's very easy to do and it creates a really stylized look to your images. If you haven't done so already please do subscribe to my channel and now let's get going. So the way to create a crushed flax look is to use the curves layer. So where is our curves tool? It's this one here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just explain how curves work. So the bottom area of your curves is responsible for your blacks and your shadows. And the top area of the curves is for your highlights and your whites. So the top part of the curve is for your highlights. The mid part of your curve is your midtones, and accordingly the bottom part of your curves is your shadows. So the first thing you're going to do is we're going to add two points to our curves. So just click once to add a point. And don't worry if you make a mistake, you can just start again by clicking this button here. So by adding points to our curves, we're just securing the midtones so that they won't move or change. Now to bring our blacks up, we're just going to pull the blacks up and we're going to pull the highlights down. So let's see the effect before and after. So that's making your blacks less black and your whites less white and that's what creates that crushed or matte look. Now suppose we want a more dramatic look. I've just duplicated that layer, we're going to keep it as it is already. We've got the crushed blacks and the crushed whites. But now let's create a bit more contrast by adjusting the midtones. So let's take the two points we've made. So we're going to pull that midpoint down and we're going to pull that midpoint up. So that's creating a more extreme S curve and more contrast in our midtones. So we've still got our crushed blacks and our crushed whites, but we've got more contrast in the midtone areas. If it's too strong, pull your opacity down. That's with a subtle crushed blacks and whites look, and then this is with more contrast in our midtones. Now if you like it overall, but you think there's one part of your image that doesn't work, you can always mask that out. So what we need to do is get a black brush. I would just lower the opacity to about 50% because you don't want to get rid of the change completely or it might look odd. And then just take it out of the area that you don't like it in. I'm just gonna bring back the hair because I want the hair to come up. I just thought it was too dark on her cheek. So before and after. So that's with our subtle crushed blacks and whites and that's with more contrast in the mid-tones. So now, what if we want to make a more extreme look? So let's do that now. So we're not going to stabilise our midtones, we're just going to have a play around, starting with our blacks. We're roughly using the points as we did before, but we're not stabilising the midtones, we're just having a play. And often with curves, that's the way you have to do it, you just have to play around and see what effect you get. And don't do exactly what I'm doing because it will depend on your image. Just use this as a guide and then try and see what works for you and your image. So that's before and after. That's a much more extreme effect. If you change to luminosity mode, all that will affect is the luminosity rather than the saturation of your image, so it won't affect your colours. It's just a question really of trying both. I would always try both normal and luminosity and see which works best. I think with this image, luminosity is best and we can now really play and create extreme effects with this curves layer. Again, there's no hard science. It's just making adjustments and see what effect you like best. So that's before and after. So that's quite an extreme effect. And one thing you have to be careful of when making extreme curves layers is you don't get banding. 
This is an example of banding and you can see all those horrible lines. This often happens when you're working in 8 bits. So go to image and change to 16 bit when working with extreme curves. Make sure you're still in 16 bit when you flatten your curve. After that, you can change it back to 8 bit if you want to, and you shouldn't get banding. It may show in Photoshop, but that tends to be with just the preview. Your actual image should be good and would have no banding. This is actually an 8 bit JPEG that I'm working on. So there is some banding here. If we zoom in, can you see on her cheek? But actually, it's not too bad considering it's an 8 bit JPEG that's had a lot of processing already. But if you work on a TIFF file or a RAW file, you work in 16 bit for your curves adjustments and should have no problem at all. So there's our before and our after. If you enjoyed this guys, please do subscribe to my channel and please do switch on the bell for notifications when I put out a new video. And do tag me or let me know what you do if you use this technique. I'd love to see your work. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. Goodbye.